So as a refresher in Excel, when you're using Solver, uh, at the beginning of the semester, if you recall, we ran into this issue where putting the restrictions in uh, on our X to bracket it didn't seem like it was useful. And then, of course, two-thirds of the way through the semester, it comes in handy, and we don't remember that we need to do it. I didn't either until I had to fight with it a little bit. So this is uh, an example of problem number 11 in Unit 3, Block 1. And we have uh, x in the first column, a, the function itself in b. The function looks like that if you want to take a look at it more closely. And then the derivative of that function in column c. I've since expanded this to be uh, every one-tenth, so it's increasing by one-tenth, only because I was fighting with it and it wasn't sorting out what I needed to do. So uh, we, hap uh, we happen to see that, notice this is a very... Uh, large in magnitude negative number, so a very, very small number, uh, and it is increasing until we get up to negative 225.792 at x equals negative 5.6. Then at negative 5.5, it's a positive value, so we should understand that there's a zero in between this negative number and this positive number. There's at least one zero. So I'm going to use solver to find out what that zero value is. So uh, let's go into, let's select a cell. Let's go into Solver. And I think Solver already has these in here, but I want to delete them. So remember in Solver, I'm going to choose C47, which corresponds to this cell. I'm going to make sure that I'm looking for the value of zero. So when does this derivative function equal to zero? And then this should match up with the x value that I'm using as an input to this derivative function. And in turn, it's used, being used as the input to this function as well. Now when I run this, it gives me the zero that actually appears at x equals zero. It's actually giving me this zero over here. Uh, excuse me, one more shot. The one that appears right here. I ended up doing it solver over here as well. But the zero that appears there is showing up in this location where I'm trying to find a different zero because the software is driving out to an, a number all the way up to zero and it's going to try to iterate and get, get down to this one but it finds a zero well before then. So what we want to do is explicitly tell uh, Solver, Excel, via Solver that I don't want to go that far up towards zero. I want to add some constraints. So I'm going to say the cell that I want, this one, must be less than or equal to some value. Let's say negative 5.4. Why do I want it to be less than or equal to negative 5.4? Because I know my the x value I'm looking for is less than that. And so I'm going to add that. I can either add that or hit OK, I believe. And there's my constraint. But that may be enough. I don't know. But because I was wrestling with this so much, I decided I'm going to bracket it or enclose the numbers that I'm going to try on both sides. So now I'm only going to test numbers between negative 5.4 and negative infinity. But let's say we don't want to work that hard or we want to make sure we get there more quickly, etc. I'm going to pick this cell again. And now I'm going to say it must be greater than or equal to, and this time I'm going to put in negative 5.6. So I'm going to choose this number. So I'm looking for a number in between negative 5.5 and negative 5.6. Hopefully I'm making sense to you. I'm going to hit OK. Now those two constraints. I'm going to bracket in between there. And so now I'm going to use Solver and hit Solve. And it's going to work and give me some very, very low value. And the x value that gives me that particular zero was negative 5.5413813 or something close to that. All right, that's it.